glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. 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 Had a young preacher say one time, you could have woke up dead this morning. Yeah. So you ought to thank God that you didn't. Amen. But uh, we're glad that you're here. We're going to get in and worship God today and let God have his perfect way. And uh, just believe in God for some good things. Let's go to God in prayer. And let's, let's make him welcome here. And uh, I like doing that and just letting him know that we want him in our presence. Father, we come to you today asking God that you would just come down and be with us today, minister to us today, asking God that your presence would just fill this tabernacle. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just speak to our hearts and speak to our lives, minister to us, God. You know every need, and you know what needs to be done, asking God that you'd meet that need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord and some congregationals today. Sister Karen leads us.
is looking forward to your mansion over in glory. Amen. Amen. Main reason I'm looking for it because I don't have to do maintenance on it. <laughs> Amen. Brother Aldi gotta, agrees with me on that one. Agree with her, yeah. And uh, but anyway, we it's good to know that we have somewhere beyond this old life that's non-perishable. Right. Everything here that we got is perishable. Anybody know anything about yeah. that? Yeah. You can buy the best that money can buy, and somewhere it's going to break down or something's going to happen to it. Uh, but everything that God gives us, amen, and glory is going to be non-perishable. Right. What a day that's going to be. It's going to be a glorious day. Amen. We're going to come to you today for your, your tithes and offering. How many, how many believes in giving tithes and offering into the Lord? Amen. Well, we got some to pray through, it looks that's like. Right. But, uh <laughs> But uh, we found out for sure that if you give unto God, God will give back unto you. Matter of fact, he said, good measures, press down and run it over. Amen. Right. Shall men give unto your bosom. I, we have found out to be true. If we'll just be faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. Right. Amen. And so we're going to come to you for your tithes and offering. we got some with us today that's not been able to be with us for a couple Sundays because of sickness. And they're with us today. So going to give you an opportunity to move around, shake hands, and 
Tell everybody you're glad to see them and, and fellowship with just a little bit. Amen. We want you to bring your offerings and tithes to the Lord. And God will bless you for your giving. Yeah. Father, we come to you today asking God your blessings upon our tithes and offering. And Father, we come knowing that you're a, you're a God that giveth in return, God. And God, we love you for it, God. And we pray, God, that your blessings upon everyone that gives. And those that may not have it to give, God, we pray that you bless them so they could give it in the future. We love you for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Bring your gifts. Go fellowship for just a minute. Wonderful. For you giving, we appreciate it so much, amen. And uh, this has always been such a wonderful giving church, uh, financially and all other ways. And we, we just thank God for you and appreciate you for for doing what you do. And uh, well, you know, uh, church is a lot like a business. People don't like don't like to look at it that way, but uh, it has operational funds, and uh, you know, there's things that's got to be done to meet the need. Insurance is high and things like that. So it takes finances to operate it. Plus, we want to bless our pastors. We want to make sure that they have what they need to uh, meet the need and, and don't want them to be in want. So we appreciate your giving. We want to just give a quick report on uh, Brother Tim's church in, in Alma. And I've been running back and forth working with him on that and probably go back, not this coming week, but the following week, Lord willing. And... Uh, uh, but uh, man, things are things are getting just real, real close. Uh, videos have been sent to Pastor Dwayne and some pictures, and so he's going to be getting those ready to to show you just real soon. But sanctuary is finished, everything but the floor trim, uh, but everything else is done. Uh, foyer is finished. They laid the floors the other day. Uh, that's that's done except for the floor trim. Uh, bathrooms are all finished. Uh, you know, except for just putting in the um, the, uh, the utilities there and the the uh, stalls, putting the stalls in, and uh, so uh, and the, the uh, nurseries, both nurseries are finished, and the classrooms are finished, the junior church is finished, and all of that is boy just come together in just the last few weeks. The septic tank is in, hooked up, and that was a uh, that was a biggie because man, they've been four months waiting on that. That's in and hooked up and ready to go, and uh, I, I'm talking about they're they're just they're just uh, well they got the um, they got the community building rented for the next two Sundays, and so they're praying that that the following Sunday after that they can go and have service in their new sanctuary and, and new new building. And the only thing they like on it is is the uh, fellowship hall, and they're gonna have to do that in a phase two um, program. And you know building. When you do things, especially in churches, uh, you kind of have to do things in phase one and phase two because finances just don't allow you to do what you need to do. But um, gentleman came through the other day, 
and uh, already appraised the building for a half a million dollar building and just just for what's been done and uh, it's just it's just amazing uh, insurance insured insured it for 1.5 million but they got to come back out and reevaluate it when it's finished and so uh, just a beautiful complex and uh, so we're, we're hoping to uh, link up with the um, somehow video connection uh, on their first Sunday where this church can be a part of that church because I know this church is sold into that ministry and and uh, we're going to try to make that happen and uh, so but continue to pray for them brother Tim is is down in his back and still trying to press on and work and and uh, that's difficult been there done that still doing that but anyway uh, let's just lift them up in prayer that uh, the finished work uh, brother Aldi knows that you that do anything it seems like the finished work takes the longest trying to get those little checkoff points and just seems like it just takes forever to get done and, and uh so uh let's let's lift them up in prayer that god would just meet their need and just answer their prayers they got a building sitting on the side of the highway up there in town right in town they need so desperately and that's the one that the storm hit and uh, caused it to the roof to collapse on it and that property is up for sale and that building that property needs to sell quickly and uh, so let's pr begin to pray that 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 would happen and they could get the sale of that property they've lowered it down to to mainly just for the property value because the building's not usable it's been condemned but they lowered the price down for uh, what the property value would be and uh, it's prime location, but just takes the right person to want it. And so just help us pray that 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 a sale and uh, they can get out from under that as well. Amen. We're going to go into worship. We want you to worship God in your own way. I've always said this as long as I've been pastoring. Uh, this is something that we all can do. And it's something we all should do. Uh, you know, worship is a is an intimate time between you and the Father. And uh, you know, used to we'd we'd uh, break out of our seats and we'd come around the front or we'd get somewhere alone with God. And uh, because we knew that that moment, that time, was just between us and God. And uh, somewhere, maybe maybe COVID, maybe I don't know what caused us to stop doing that, but. I'd like to see us begin to do that a little more. Just just uh, get along with God in, in this time of worship and uh, and just worship God just as just between you and Him. You say, Brother Russell, I don't know all the songs. Well, sometimes you can just worship God with just the melody, just the tune. It, it's not about the song. It's about your time along with God. So this is our moment to just be with God. And here in a little bit, the word will be preached. We can all corporately enjoy that together. But praise and worship is an intimate time with God. And so we're going to do that. So as they lead us in worship, I want you to stand. If you want to come around the front, if you want to make your, your way somewhere out from where you are, where you can just be comfortable, we want you to do that. Where you can raise your hands, you can focus on God, you can just magnify Him in your own way. But let's worship God today.
Savior. Lift up your voices and say, have a rain, Lord Jesus, you are in our lives. Come on, sing his praises. Hallelujah. You are worthy of Hallelujah. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Can somebody say amen? Amen, amen. amen. It's been so good to be able to fellowship with my brothers and sisters this morning. Uh, as Brother Marty has already uh, and, uh, said this morning and doing a, fan jo a fine job, uh, open up service and noticing everybody. Uh, one, it's so good to see everybody, but it's good to see the faces that have been out because of sickness. Uh, they uh, uh, are here today. It's so good to see Katrina and the family back in service with us. Good to see Sister Nancy and them with us. It's so good to have the Cox family in with us. I, I can't tell you how uh, blessed we feel, how blessed I feel uh, to be able to be in the house of God with my brothers and sisters. Amen. And, and something about when you, 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 you can worship God when you're alone. And there, there's an intimacy when you do that, when you're worshiping God alone. But there's a whole other thing, Brother Adi, when you come together together with your brothers and sisters and worship God corporately hallelujah and give him the praise how many knows he's worthy to be praised come on somebody why don't we do this let's give the kids and our leaders a good hand clap of appreciation as we have a big crowd of kids going back there hey man I'm telling you what leadership is important it's so good to have people who have a passion and desire to help teach and direct and lead kids and it's so good to be able to have that help and just the heart of wanting to work for the Lord how many loves the Lord today amen hallelujah how many is just to prove you can stop for a moment just see uh, what all God has done in your life amen God is has been I can say honestly God has been good to me amen I can look back and as Sister Christy was singing, I believe the song's called Egypt. Um, no, whatever that second song was. Goodness of God, okay. But the that song really, uh, I was praying before I even, before she even sang that song. And I was just thanking God for never leaving me. Even though I may have turned my back on him, he was still there, Brother Audie. Even though I know I've I done wrong, and I, he still gave me chance after chance. And I'm so glad to know that his mercies are made new every single day. And his love is, it, it is so unconditional. And I, I praise God that if you seek his face, he will show you those things. And he will be true. He will be true in your life. Can we just give God another hand clap of praise in this place for how good he is. Amen. He is so good and he is worthy to be praised. How many enjoyed your worship today? Amen. Wasn't it good to have some good worship this morning? The presence of God is here in this place. And I'll not be, uh, I'll not tarry too much longer on that. 
Um, but I just want to say it's good to be in the house of the Lord. How many's hungry? All right. How many's had breakfast? Not, not, yeah, no one. <laughs> I had a little bit of beef jerky, and that's about all I had. Uh, but how many, how many, you just, it, it's, it's, you come, I'm not going to say it like that. You can't wait to eat, amen? You get hungry, amen? Well, I titled my message this morning, Hungry for More. Hungry for More. I uh, feel like God has laid this on my heart and has been, Dealing with me uh, for the past few weeks on this message. I didn't know I was going to preach this message, but this is what God's been dealing with me on. And I pray that every single one of us get hungry for more. There was something, and I'll say this and then I'll start my reading, but there was something. Uh, how many knows the uh, minister or evangelist, street evangelist, Ray Comfort? There's a man by the name of Ray Comfort who he goes out, he's in, I believe, over uh, places like California, just very populated areas that he'll go out on the street. He's kind of a short man, but he'll stand up on this little bucket, and he's got his little signs out here, and he will be proclaiming the goodness of God and preaching the gospel, something that, that a lot of people can't do. A lot of people struggle to to do that kind of evangelistic work but Ray Comfort even though he pastors a very successful church he says I'm not a pastor he says I'm evangelist and my heart and passion is to get out in the streets and proclaim the gospel and lead people to Christ on the streets and you can tell it because when he's doing it he's working in his office but he said something one time and I was just watching one video after another on him and and he said something that really got my attention. He said before he eats physically, before he takes care of this physical body, he first eats and takes care of the spiritual body. If he does not read his word, then he does not eat. I wonder today how many starving people we'd have. Come on somebody. He said, I, I will not eat one food. He, he got it in his mind that until he, he, until he first feeds his spirit, he will not feed his flesh. And I, I, I hope that this is a mindset that we all can get a hold of. Because something I heard last night from the minister at which we went down there at a revival Saturday night at Woods Chapel, and the minister there said this. He said, "We need to get so if the more that we read His Word, then the more that we get into His Word, the hungrier we'll get. But the less we read of His Word, and the more we pull away from His Word, the less hungry we will be for it." So I pray today that we have that kind of, and when we leave this place, we leave it with a mindset today. That before I feed this flesh, let me feed my spirit. Amen. Let's go to the word today. at Psalms chapter 63. This, uh, this verse, Brother Eric has been teaching on on Wednesday nights. And it is just, the, I, I believe that, that, uh, that when he started teaching on this verse, that's when God's really been dealing with me. But this verse has really stood out to me, and I want to read it with you. Psalm 63, 1 through 8. Verses 1 says this, O God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee, my soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land when there is no water. To see Thy power and Thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. 
when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches because thou hast been my help therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice my soul listen to this followeth hard after thee I got to say that one again my soul followeth hard after thee thy right hand upholdeth me father let us all say that together God as we leave this place let us echo your words God in our hearts as we see the psalmist we see David here proclaiming promises I will and I shall praise you all the days of my life but God let our souls cry out from the innermost God Lord that my soul falleth hard for you Lord Jesus God, I pray that as we leave this place, God, we leave more hungry and more hungry for you. God, that our soul thirsts for you, God. Lord, that our passion will be first to feed our spirit, God, and be in your presence, God, that it will be more important to be in your presence than to take care of this physical body because we long and hunger to be with you more, God. We pray, God, right now, Lord, that you would open up our ears, open up our understanding, God, that we may take in your word and apply it to our lives, Lord. We love you and we thank you and we're careful to give you all the honor, all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. This scripture right here, this text that that David is sharing uh, is, is just a praise uh, anthem off of the mouth out of the mouth of David when David has realized that that God has been there for him and when he has been in the wilderness when he has been lost and and, and he know, know not his way God always showed up how many has been there in your life where you don't know what your next step's going to be uh, your next step has been faith Come on, somebody. Your next step has been trusting in God. Come on, somebody. You, you, you don't know what you're going to do, but you trust God anyway. How many knows that in those times you see God so much more real than in the times that you have blessings abound? But you see God so much more real when you're going through hardship and when you're going through trials and situations because God will never leave you he will never forsake you but he'll go with you even to the ends of the earth and when you're going through struggles and situations it's when your eyes are in the right direction and you begin to notice just how good God is just how true God is and just how much God stands on his word come on somebody hallelujah God is true and he can never be a liar come on hallelujah so when he says it it is so and if Jesus said I'll never leave you nor forsake you no matter if in your mind you think you're not worth it or not uh, God is still going to be there hallelujah because he's not a liar and he if he says it then he will do it and I like the fact that David here is proclaiming from his mouth some promises I didn't even really notice it until after I just read it just now. But I like what David is saying. He says, I will seek thee. Hallelujah. He says, my lips shall praise thee. I will lift my hands in thy name. Hallelujah. He over and over in, his, in this text, he says, my, my, I, my mouth shall praise thee and jo- my, with my joyful 
faithful lips. Uh, I will remember thee. Hallelujah. He is making decrees. He is promising uh, God that from, from, the, uh, from now until the day he sees God face to face, he will praise God. And every bit of himself will praise God. Uh, oh, Lord, help me uh, to have that kind of mindset. Help me, hallelujah, to have that kind of drawing and passion uh, that says, Lord, uh, no matter what else comes my way, uh, let it be known to you, God, that this body will praise you until I see you face to face. Come on. Hallelujah. There's a, that, that we don't praise God because we have to. He already has the angels for that. We don't praise God because we're ordered to because He has the creation for that. But we praise God because we want to. We love God because we want to. Because He first loved us. Hallelujah. Because He went to the cross for us. And from the very foundations of the earth, it wasn't just 2,000 years ago. But from the very foundation in the earth, our God, creator of the universe, already had it planned to give all that He had so that He could have us come and fellowship with him in eternity how good God is he is a good good father and no matter how many times we give to our kids uh, we love our kids how many loving parents we got in here you love your kids you die for your kids you want to give your kids the whole world uh, and it doesn't matter if they uh, they, 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 get, they, don't, they don't act right and they don't do right uh, it doesn't matter if, if you got to discipline them and get on to them it doesn't change your love for them it doesn't change your hope for them it doesn't change uh, that you want better for them if we feel that way as good parents to our children how much more does our heavenly father feel that way for us Sister Katrina I was sitting over here in worship just a minute ago when I was thinking God I don't even understand I don't even understand how it is that even when I've turned my back on you so many times throughout my life when I have lived a, a life of, uh, uh, of hypocrisy, you still love me. Uh, I don't believe that our human mind can really fathom or understand that kind of love. Because when we're done wrong or, or, or when somebody continuously does something wrong to us, we so easily can say, you know what, I, I, I love them, but let me love them from a distance. Aren't you glad that God doesn't do that to us? But God loves us so much that even when we've turned our backs on Him, even when we spit in His face, even when we, we ignore His rule and His command, and we ignore the things that He put in order for our benefit, He still loves us. And nothing, nothing can take us away from His love. Not anything. Didn't have that in my notes. But I feel like somebody needs to know God loves you and you are not alone. He is with you. And he is working the things out that the enemy meant to kill you and destroy you and to get you under. He's working those things out for good. You know why? Because he loves you because you love him too. He'll turn those things around that the enemy wants to destroy you with. He will turn them around to help you out. To lift you up. Not only that, he loves you so much. Hallelujah. He already knows what you have need of. Even when you feel like he's not working, he is. He's working it out. All of these are really good reasons to hunger and thirst. This is why David was saying here in the 63rd Psalm, he's saying with everything in me, God, you never left me. God, you have been for me. From the very foundations of the earth, you wrote a book about me. You, you love me. 
And for every bit of my life, I will praise thee. And this is, this is just what he's making promises to God because God has been so good to him because he sees just how good God really is. And he sees the love and, and feels the love that God has for him. He sees the things that God does and works out in his life and protects him. I'm here to tell you something. Ain't no other God in this world that will do you like the God creator and heavenly father. There is no other. There is no other. Can somebody say amen to that? But what I want you, I want to bring to your attention is I want you to show, see in, uh, in verses 1, 3, 5, and 8 some, uh, some of the verses that really caught my attention. I want you to see how he uh, explains this. He says, My soul thirsteth for thee, my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. He says in verse 3, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. In verse 5, he says, My soul shall be satisfied as with morrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Verse 8, he mentions, My soul falleth hard after thee. All of these things we can kind of see and look that he rep he kind of uh, uh, um, represents or, or, or s some similarities of what we do to our physical body as we feed this physical body and, and, and it's so easy for us to when we leave this place we're going to go to a restaurant and we're going to eat until we're full past. Hey Amen, are you with me? We're, we're, gonna, we're going to devour food and we're going to eat food and we will eat until we are full and some of us will eat even further than that. Some of us, and I'm tell, I'll, I'll, I'll not going to point no fingers at you because I got those many more pointing back at me and I didn't count it because I knew I'd get it wrong. I know how many fingers I got on my hand, but that doesn't matter. I'm not good at counting sometimes. But anyways... I'm not going to point at you because I know I'm the one who loves to eat. I love food. And I'm telling you something. It's easy for me that when I begin to eat food because of the love of taste, I keep eating and keep eating until I can't breathe afterwards and I'm in excruciating pain. Come on, somebody say amen. I know I'm not the only one. All right? But we see here that David is saying the same thing, if not more, but not for his physical body. David's not even worried about his physical body in this passage of Scripture. The, David's not even, even thinking about that. I, I can't even hardly read Scriptures. I can't even say my title, Hungry, without somebody saying, Boy, you know what? I am hungry. I can't even hardly talk about, I always, always hate when pastors would get up here on the pulpit and they start preaching and they start preaching those messages, talking about food, and then they go into detail and start talking about those ribs and all that, just like I'm doing right now, and all of a sudden your mouth starts watering. Come on, somebody. But listen, David's doing the same thing, but for the presence of God. For being in his presence and saying, oh, my mouth, God, it will sing of your praises. My mouth thirsts for your praises. I, I will lift up my lips. My lips will praise you and it will, it will recognize you and it will glorify you. Every bit of my body, I will fall hard for you, Lord. Almost like Ray Cumber said, I will not take one food in for my physical body until I first fed my spiritual body. Oh, I, I told Chrissy, this is what I want to get to. This is what I want to do for myself. I challenged myself uh, that I, before I eat of any physical food, I want to first open up my word. I want to be known that, okay, Dwayne likes to eat, but if he's eaten, he first read his word. I want people to know it. 
I don't I, I know we're supposed to do things in secret, but I want to be so I want to be so close to God that people just know because before he eats anything, he has already been in his word. I want everybody to know that about you as well. I want every one of us in this place to say, before I take care of the uh, things of this flesh, I want to first take care of the things uh, of the spirit. Uh, because this flesh, Brother Audie, is going to pass away. But the one thing that will never pass away is this spirit right here. It's going to live either eternity in heaven with God or away from God in eternal punishment in hell. So the reality is, let me not take care of this physical body, but let me take care of the spiritual body. I've heard it preached so many times. I wonder, and I've preached it myself, I wonder what our spirit man really looks like. If we was to be able to take our physical body away for just a moment and look in the mirror and see our spiritual body, what would he or she look like? Would he be, look like an anorexic? Would he look like obese? What would he look like? Well, I know it's not really, uh, uh, I know it's frowned upon in, in the physical realm, but I hope when I look in the mirror, I'm obese. Come on, somebody. I, I want to be so full, God. I want to be so full of God, overflowing. And it's so easy to say those words. Come on, somebody. Can we be real? It's so easy, even with David here, and I believe David means it sincerely, and I believe when you say it, you mean it sincerely, but it's so much easier to say the words than to actually do it. God, help us to get further than words. God, help us to get further than words, but God, help us to be hungry for more, God. Help us to be long to be hungry for more. Jesus said this in John 21, 12 through 17. He said, Jesus, uh, he said, come and dine. Hallelujah. He wants us to come unto him and, and devour of the word and, and fellowship with each other. I love what Jesus said when, when the disciples asked him and said, uh, are you going to eat? Jesus said, the food that I eat uh, is not the same I don't eat the same way that y'all eat he doesn't worry about the physical body but he eats and you know, with the presence of God that he would leave himself leave the disciples frequently to be in the presence of his father if Jesus did it how much more should we his followers and his disciples uh, frequently go, find ourselves alone with our heavenly father not worried about our physical physique but praising God and, and feeding our spirit amen being in the presence of him Jesus told Satan that man cannot live by bread alone but by every word that precedes the mouth of God in Matthew chapter 4 and 4 he was referring to a referencing the, the text from Deuteronomy where Moses told the children of Israel to basically, in, a, in his words, he told him to trust God, trust in his word uh, uh, and God alone, to hunger for God uh, and his word. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and 3, let's just read it, or, or let me read it for you. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey God, God, Moses was telling the children of Israel you, you're not going through this wilderness for no reason. You're not wondering yourself for no reason but you're wondering here so that you can begin to see See how much you should trust the Lord. Even though you were hungry. Even though you 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 when brought out of bondage and you were hungry, you asked for food and God gives it to you. Do you know what manna means? Exactly. What is it? <laughs> That's what manna means. How many here will admit? You've went to a family reunion and you begin to eat some foods and there's some things you begin to eat and you say, what is this? <laughs> My family member 
Barbara sat beside me. I can't say that. No. And hunters will bring in some deer chili and not tell nobody. But the moment you dig into it, you know this ain't regular chili. <laughs> Wait, what is this? Amen. Brother Bart Reithmeyer brought in one time to a fellowship when we was going to Hoxie some bacon wrapped duck. I don't know how many likes duck in here. I know one man for sure because he's already going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some bacon wrapped duck. First thing I heard when he brought that in there and we started putting food in our plates, I heard somebody say, what is this? I got to know what it is before I eat it. But God said, no, I'm going to give you something. You're not going to know what it is. You're going to have to trust me and just do what I tell you to do. And not only am I going to give you a food that you don't know what it is, it's from me. And trust, if I give you something, it's going to take care of you. Come on, somebody. He said, I'm going to give you the, I'm going to nourish your body. I'm going to take care of your body. But you don't know what it is. Your fathers don't know what it is. Nobody knows what it is. It's just from me. Can you trust that? <laughs> I think some of us has got some answers from God that are kind of like that. God, I don't know what you're doing. God's saying, just trust me. Come on, somebody. Amen. God said, don't get more than what you need. Just get what you need. Get what will take care of you and your family. And I'll take care of the rest. God is throughout his word has told us that we can trust him. We can, uh, we can put our faith in him that he will never fail us. That he even knows every need that we have even before we ask. But sometimes we're. <clears throat> we can trust God. We can trust in Him. We can trust that even in the hard situations, even in the tough situations, that God is working things out. That God is making things to turn around for the good for those who love Him. That He is not a liar. And if His Word says it, maybe instead of letting those things creep in and sow doubt and fear into your mind, maybe you need to open up your Word and find those promises that He has and not only repeat them to Him, to right and mind him but to echo those promises that are true and yes and amen in your mind to encourage you that God still sees you right where you're at he knows what you're going through he knows what you're dealing with and he's working things out can somebody say amen I need to hear that that my God is working things out that he knows what I'm dealing with and I'm not alone in this but God's going to get me through it he's seen me too it he's gonna see me through it I trust my God I trust him I trust him I trust him I trust him hallelujah I, I'm wondering today how many are so hungry for God you see if you were really hungry for God then you would go to the word before you went to fear if you're really hungry for God, then you would go to the Word before you went to the doctor. If you're really hungry for, come on somebody. If you're really hungry for God, and I know I say this, and I know it's been almost every, every Sunday, and I'm not trying to beat you over the head with it, I promise. But I'm just saying if we were truly hungry for God, as all of those fingers point right back to me again, if we were really hungry for God, then our life would show it. I cannot leave a restaurant without this belly getting any bigger. My life shows it. I'm full. Come on, somebody. The same way with your spirit. If you're full of God, your life will show it. Your spiritual body will show it. You, you can't walk down a, a mountain from being in the presence of God without having a glow about you. Oh, come on, somebody. How many Moseses do we have in this building who says, I want to tarry in the presence of God? I, maybe the reason he was four days late coming and seeing the people was just on Moses's 
saying, Lord, I don't want to leave. I don't want to get out of your presence. Uh, God, you've already wrote the Ten Commandments. You've already done all those things. You've already given me instruction and direction the way that I should lead these people. But I just want to be with you. And he come down glowing so bright that they had to take a tunic and wrap it around his head because he was bright. He was glowing of the glory of God from being in his presence. Oh, praise God. The word tells us that he was up there for 40 days in the presence of God. Just, I mean, just surrounded by him. And they were back and forth with each other, communing together and having a relationship with each other that most of us will never see an experience until we see him face to face so much so that he was glowing I wonder how much are glowing of us are glowing when we get out of our prayer closets how much of us are glowing of the word you cannot read you cannot read the word of God unless you go in it with a mindset that you're going to you cannot read the word of God and leave your house encouraged and just and uplifted and seeing things better in your life you can't because it, the word of God encourages you and even if you read stuff like lamentations come on somebody even when you read some downers in the word because it's in there you still are encouraged because all throughout the word it tells us how much he is for us and not against us. Praise God. How many is hungry for the word? How many is truly hungry? Back in the time that there was, there was a, 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 a sound that, um, that us generation, my generation and, and younger and um, maybe just before me, Maybe not understand, but I can tell you that there are probably some people in this church that will know what I'm talking about. But, but when mama would have been sur- just slaving uh, uh, the whole time in the kitchen getting the meal ready, there was a sound that you would hear that you would get used to. Because you were out there doing your chores and you were doing out there doing everything you were supposed to be doing, playing with your brothers and sisters because we all know they had a lot of brothers and sisters back then in that time. <laughs> playing and having a good old time and then doing all that, they would hear a sound. Brother Ashley, won't you show us? Hey, Bubba, tell the guys, come on, it's quit time. Time to eat, boys. How many here can say you heard your mama maybe a mile away when it was time for dinner? All you had to hear was, come and get it, and you come running. Well, I'm here to tell you something. There was another bell that a lot of people were used to hearing. Brother Ashton, go ahead. There's another bell that you would hear, and it means a lot the same. Come and die. Come and die. The bells are ringing, and it's time for dinner. It's time to come and dine with Jesus. It's time to come and dine in the presence of the Lord. It's time to put down every other thing that you're doing right now. Drop it. There used to be a day where if it was Sunday, every business was closed because they were ready to go eat. They were ready to go and be in the presence of the Lord. And I pray, I pray, help me, Lord. Help us, Lord. That our hearts get so hungry for God that we hear that bell every single day of our lives uh, when we are up uh, sleeping in our beds. Uh, instead of hearing our alarm clock, uh, we hear the dinner bell start ringing. Uh, oh, Jesus is saying, uh, oh, come be in my presence. Come be in my presence. Come spend some time with me. Oh, Hallelujah. Before we lay our heads down, before we go to sleep, I hope we hear that bell ringing, that dinner bell ringing, saying, oh, come and dine, come and eat, come and just devour the word. I got something cooked up real special for you, and it's it's right for the season that you're dealing with right now. Oh, hallelujah. 
you're dealing with something right now and I have made, I've got all the ingredients together. I've made it especially for you because I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're going through and I have made it. Oh, you're going to enjoy it. I've put it all together and the thing is, uh, it's a, it's an old recipe that I've been putting in this thing for many, many years. So I've been doing it for a while. I know how to do it the good way that will fill you up and satisfy you. Oh, like David said, your word satisfies me. Oh, everything else in this world, let it pass away because your word satisfies my ever being. Whew, hallelujah. You can tell that David was so hungry for God because of the way he was talking, Lord. I, you have given me everything. But I had everything before you gave me everything. Because I have you. You satisfy me. As I come to a close here, I've been talking about food and I've been talking about all those good things. Talking about how you can tell when mama would holler for you. But there's another thing that mama, you may have heard from your mama tell you. They would say, don't eat those cookies, don't eat those snack cakes before dinner. It will ruin your dinner. Really what they're saying is don't, don't eat all of those junk food. Don't eat that junk food because you're not going to be hungry for the real food. God is saying you're so full of the worldly entertainment junk food that you aren't hungry for the word of God. Something I heard last night that convicted my heart. Everything else in this world gets in the way of God. Everything else. Now, if you're sitting in here and you're saying, Brother Dwayne, you ain't talking to me because I, I read my word every single day. That's good. I'm so glad. Don't stop. Don't, don't give up doing good. For in due season, you shall reap. Keep on doing it. But if there are some here today, they're saying, man, I'm just, it's one thing after another. And I can't seem to get over it. God's saying, I got something specially made up for you. I got a meal prepared for you. Let me show you. I, I've, listen, I've been guilty. I've been so guilty of letting entertainment get in the way. And I've been, not, God's shown it to me. God's been bringing it to my attention. And, 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 <laughs> I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm a lot like my kids. When we tell them to do something, I'll, okay. God is trying to get your attention. And the, and the sad thing is, is when we get in His Word, it's better for us. The things that He does for us, even though that we don't understand all of them, it's better for us. And when we ignore it, we put ourselves in harm and in danger. We harden our heart every time we ignore Him. Even though what He's got is better for us. The more you get in your Word, the more you will hunger and, and thirst for His Word. I say this. End with this. Psalms 119. A lot of people in here knows this scripture and love this scripture. 
How sweet, it's 103 through 107. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it. That I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. We all walk around in darkness. We're born into darkness. And if we don't open that word of God as your flashlight, and you can choose to continue to walk and stump your toe and get lost, or you can choose to get your flashlight and turn it on. The way I took this scripture was I will not have light unless I have my word. So if I want light in my life, which is His goodness and His blessings, if I want light in my life, I will read His Word. If I want to be satisfied in my life, I will read His Word. Come on. Lord, I pray this, Father. Let us become dim-eyed to the entertainment of this world. Let the entertainment of this world fall short of satisfaction, Lord, that there be a hunger in us, a thirst inside of us, Lord, that we go searching to fill and quench the hunger and thirst but that we only find that satisfaction in your word God let the hunger be so vast and so heavy on us Lord that we gotta go to the word because when we get in the word Lord one we find you and we hunger for it more Help us to have that drawing and passion to be more and more in you, God, that we will hunger for more. I thank you, Lord God, that you have already written out your word, that we can read your word and be in your presence and commune with you. You did it all so that you could be with us until we see face to face. And we thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Can we all stand all over the building? Each and every one of you are going through situations and dealing with things that we may not know about. Everybody's got thoughts, concerns, worries, doubts, fears that you fight in the battlefield called your mind every single day that we don't know about I wonder if you would just slip your hands up today and just praise God that when you do it you signify Lord I trust you and I give it all to you Sister Ashley wants you just to say whatever's on your heart and let's do just that. Give it to God right now. It's His. He's taking care of it. Release it today. Come on. Come on. Receive today the peace of God. Release the stress. Release the fear. Release the doubt right now in the name of Jesus. Put it in the hands of God. Receive His peace. Come on. Come on. In Jesus' name, come on. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't.
can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I give it all to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to fret over it anymore. I'm not going to let the devil beat me over the head with it. No more. It is yours. And I trust you're working it out, God. I love you. I thank you. I love you. Come on. Worship him. Come on. Give him praise. Yes. Come on. Give him praise. Receive it. Come on.
Isn't it been good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. Can we just give God just a hand clap of praise? How good it has been. Praise God to be in His house. Praise God. I, I hope that 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 uh, you were blessed today. I hope that that you got what you came for today. Uh, maybe God spoke to you directly in a message that you were needing to hear. We just thank God for that. Amen. Thank God that he does that. So I, I've read a bunch of scripture today, so I'm good to eat. Um, don't, don't, eat don't eat physically until you eat spiritually. <laughs> so that's cheating, Brother Wayne. You can't do that. All right. How many how many's happy in the Lord? You good? Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good again to see everybody that has come out uh, today. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if Brother Ashton hasn't already ended it, thank you for people that's been watching and just keeping up with us. And and just it's been so good. Um, and God does use things like that. Amen. Anything need to be mentioned before we dismiss this morning? How many is excited for tonight? Amen.